And I went over and I said, what happened? And he said, you won't believe this. But on the very last round of the race, all of a sudden the wind swung through 45 degrees. So all of us on the right hand side of the course caught right up with the leaders and were right in the leading pack. And, you know, God taught me an interesting lesson that when you pray for something, believe that you receive it, but don't give up. I gave up before the answer came. If I'd stayed in there and I'd hung in there, then I would have received the answer to my prayer. I wouldn't have won the championship, but I might have been, I'd have been a lot higher in the stakes um, than I was at the end. And I want to use that as a bit of an illustration because a year later, um, I met Ruby, who, uh, you know, we got married. Um, and uh, and that's a whole story in itself. But two years in, um, it was clear that we were having difficulty having children. And uh, the, the medical solution was very unpredictable. The problem that had been identified was with me. And um, so, you know, the, 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 the procedures in those days, there was only one hospital that may or be, may or may not be able, you know, or may be able to help or do something. And we were uncomfortable with that. And uh, so we prayed. And every time we prayed for children, we felt God give us a promise that we would have kids. But it seemed that every word, of, you know, every time we attended a meeting and people were prayed for, maybe the people on the left had kids, the people on the right had kids, but we didn't. And so for 10 years, Ruby and I prayed for children and believed God. And every time we uh, we went through IVF three times and it didn't work. And uh, and it was like our experience one was one of, you know, building hope and building hope and then coming crashing down, building hope, building hope and then coming crashing down. And after three times through IVF, we felt that uh, it wasn't, you know, God's will for us. You know, this this wasn't God's answer and that we should stop trying. And, um, you know, if anyone's going through IVF, please don't take that as a judgment, because I believe that, you know, I've got some really good friends who have had children through IVF and, you know, I've got nothing against it at all. And I would, you know, I think when you're unwell, you know, you pray and press through in prayer. But I also believe that you can seek medical help as well. And so, you know, go through, you know, seek God and take the journey that he leads you on. OK, so but uh, that wasn't the answer for us. And uh, so anyway, we were given, you know, a, a notional less than one percent chance of having kids. And but we still had a promise. And so we held on to that promise. And I'd done a, a leadership training course in London and uh, it was a year. And after the year, we had to write down what we wanted to achieve in the next three to five years. And, and I put down at the top to, to be a father. And two people independently said to me, um, Chris, have you thought of overseas adoption? And I said, but we're too old because both I just turned 40. Ruby was into her 40s. And, you know, we didn't uh, it, it didn't happen for us. And uh, this lady turned around. She says, Chris, I am sure that you are wrong. And when I got home, um, I, there was a message on my answer machine to say that uh, if you're interested, have a word with these people because they can tell you whether or not you can adopt. And so I phoned them up and they told me and I said, you know, I thought we were too old. And she said, well, the law has been changed. It's no longer 35. Um, you can now adopt at any age. Um, and, uh, you know, the criteria is considered and, as, and they told me what we had to do. And, and, uh, and she went through a whole list of bullet, bullet points. And I just thought to myself, this, I couldn't take it all in. Um, but the first one was contact social services for a home study. I thought, right, we'll do that. We know what to do there and then we can, car then we can carry on. And so uh, we did, uh, you know, and then, when she finished her list, she went silent and pensive on me. And I just thought, oh, here we go. My hopes have been built up. And now what's going to happen is the rug will be pulled from underneath me. But then she said, you know, Chris, when you receive your child, you'll know that this is the child that you were always meant to have. 
And I just thought to myself, wow, that's amazing. And it felt like the door, uh, you know, the, the door was just suddenly opened. Anyway, it took us a year to go through the British system. Um, I'd been going to the Philippines um, on mission trips and both Ruby and I had been together and we kind of felt that the Philippines was a country we'd like to go to. And, uh, and then it took another year to go through the Philippines. And there were, you know, there were various difficulties along the way, but uh, we did indeed adopt a child. And so, and then we adopted John another three years later. So Michelle, um, she's now a mother. So I'm a granddad. Uh, she's 24 and uh, uh, my son is uh, 20 currently working at Jackie O'Hunter over. <laughs> and uh, so really interesting. But, you know, we could have given up. That's my point. But we hung in there. And it was about 15 years into our marriage that we finally had children. And uh, God is faithful. And I think my testimony is one on the faithfulness of God. And sometimes his answers come quickly, you know, Miracles happen quickly. You know, my leg grew and that happened quickly. It was a moment in time. But there are other times when we pray for things and we inherit the promise through faith and patience. And the Bible tells us that patience has to have its, or perseverance, have its full work in us that we might be mature. And also, there's a destiny involved because, you know, us fulfilling God's plan has an influence in other people's plans. You know, when we were, first wanted kids john and michelle weren't even born we were married in 1982 michelle was born in 1997 you know and she was the girl that god had planned for us to adopt and for her to be our daughter and john to be our son and so we praise god and thank him for his faithfulness in that just to pick up another uh, little illustration i can remember the company I was working for once uh, asked me to do something that, uh, and it was to copy um, a, a supplier's item. And, and I was really uncomfortable about, about it because we didn't have the intellectual property rights for it. And I can remember being uh, a little bit uptight and thinking, oh dear, here we go. I'm going to have to say no, and the company's going to sack me. So everything was negative. And I spoke to the pastor of our church and he said, well, have you thought about offering something better? And I thought, well, no, I hadn't because my mindset was all negative. And sometimes we can get caught in negative thinking. And the Bible says that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. It's a call, if you like, to think, to call, if you like, to think, diff you know, to think differently and to, you know, it tells us in the Bible that all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And that through these promises, he's given us his divine power that we might participate in the divine nature. And so I was doing the dishes that Sunday, uh, thinking, what could I offer better? And suddenly God dropped a thought into my mind of how we could use an existing item, modify it and use it for this application. And it saved the company an absolute fortune, but it was ours. And it meant that I didn't need to compromise um, what I felt was a wrong approach, but by bringing in a better approach. And you see, God is interested in every single part of our lives. He wants to be involved. You know, he wants to be involved in our work. He wants to be involved in our families. He wants to be involved in our sport and leisure. He wants to be involved in every part. He's coming. Jesus is coming. I can't wait to hear the trumpet call. He's coming. Jesus is coming. And when he comes, we'll crown him Lord of all. And when he comes, we'll crown him Lord of all. I Stories Live. Because being a Christian isn't about having, you know, some kind of um, 
obligation to do certain things, but rather it's a relationship with the living God and with his son. You know, God so loved the world. He so loves you. He so loves me. He so loves all of us that he gave his son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him, whoever believes in him, shouldn't perish but have everlasting life. And that everlasting life can start today because by his spirit, he's always with us. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake us. And the more we involve him in everyday decisions, the more peace and joy we can, we can enjoy, even though we face big challenges. And, you know, life isn't easy. I understand that people from Ukraine in particular will be listening to this. You know, your lives have been tough right now and our hearts go out to you. But, you know, Jesus can be with you in that and he can help you and he can bring comfort and he can bring peace and joy. Even when our hearts are breaking, it says that the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to, to, to give release to the captives, freedom for the prisoners, to give to comfort those, um, those who mourn. And, you know, that comfort um, is something that, you know, I've experienced. You know, I, it was uh, back in 2017, um, my uh, wife, Ruby, was diagnosed with cancer. And, um, you know, and a month later, my grandson was di diagnosed with leukemia. So we had my grandson with leukemia and we had my wife with cancer. And that was a real challenge. And, you know, both my wife and I totally believed in uh, divine healing and believed that, uh, you know, Jesus had paid the price so that we can receive by faith healing. But, you know, there is a mystery in life that things don't always necessarily work out the way we expect or intend them to be. You know, my story about God answering our prayer through giving us adopted children, our focus was on Ruby falling pregnant and us having our own children. But actually, God's plan was different. The promise was the same, but it was answered in a different way. So our focus had been in one direction, but God needed to turn us so that our focus was in line with his plan and with his purpose. Anyway, thankfully, Marco is completely healed. And, uh, and he's, he was diagnosed at two. He's seven at the end of the week, and he's a bouncing, you know, um, very lively, typical uh, little boy. He, he's wonderful. And God answered our prayers. With Ruby, God still answered our prayers, but they were answered differently. And uh, Ruby uh, went through, you know, chemotherapy. She went through a big operation. And, uh, and it was an operation to cure because they believed that, uh, you know, medically they could do that. But it removed quite a lot from her body. Then April, the following year, the diagnosis was good. There was no trace of cancer. And so we believed in Ruby's healing. We then went to, uh, we planned a holiday um, in the October to go to Bethel, a uh, place in California, uh, to a conference, and then to spend our time touring California, celebrating Ruby's healing. But then in the July, she started to have issues and um, problems and we had a diagnosis and uh, the on oncologist said i'm sorry but uh, it, you've got it in your liver and it spread and so i said to the oncologist well can you tell us you know where are we in this process and she looked at ruby and she said do you really want to know and i and she said yes and she said, well, I think you have weeks, not months. And Ruby, without flinching, looked her in the eye and said, I know where I'm going. She said, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. And I know where I'm going. My only concern is for Chris and the kids. 
Well, anyway, Ruby went on that journey and uh, very quickly, um, you know, she weakened. And then one evening I was sat with her and um, the uh, I'd fallen asleep in the chair. It was two in the morning and the nurses came in and said, I think you ought to get the kids. So I went and got the children. And uh, while we were around her bed, we took communion. And as we did, Ruby stepped into the presence of the Lord. And, you know, that left me with questions. You know, how do you answer that? And uh, when they, you know, did some of their stuff, I stood by her body. And the children had gone out into a hall area. And I said, Lord, even now you can raise Ruby from the dead. What do you want me to do? And both Ruby and I were in agreement that, you know, we weren't going to kind of get into a kind of striving thing where we were trying to make something happen that wasn't going to happen. And, uh, and, you know, and interestingly, at one point before that, Ruby had looked at me. And I'll never forget it because she, although her body had been, you know, emancipated, her eyes were just so full of light. I've never seen anything quite so holy. And she looked at me and she said, Chris, you need to find somebody else. And I couldn't talk to her because I was still believing for our healing. (laughs) I was standing. I was standing in faith. And when I stood on her by her body and I said, Lord, even now you can raise her from the dead. And the Holy Spirit said to me, Chris, you've got to let her go. And so I had to let her go. And well, fast forward a wee bit. And I'm living my life as a single parent. My son coming home at weekends, doing the laundry, doing my own shopping, going to work, etc. And I had this two-week holiday coming up, and I'll cut this really short, but God said to me, go to Val de Brennan. And I cancelled my trip to America. Anyway, I went to Val de Brennan, and it was there that God really dealt with me. And uh, he gave me a vision, and it was of a book. And in this book, there was a, a, a pen came down and put a full stop on the last page of the last chapter and the book closed and jesus said to me this is your life with ruby you've got this you can put it on the shelf you can take it down but chris this is complete ruby's life was complete and then he showed me a new book and he said and there was no writing in it and he said now we're about to write a new book And God has sent me down there saying, expect the unexpected. And I don't have time to share the whole story tonight, but that's where I met Beverly at this Christian retreat center. And it was very clear that soon we were to get married. And what I didn't realize, and, you know, it was only about three weeks ago, I realized that my kids told me this. And I was retelling the story. And uh, Michelle turned around and she says, but dad, mum told us and prepared us that she was going to be with Jesus. <laughs> and I didn't know that because I was so focused on believing for our healing. But, you know, God had a plan and he destined for me to be with Beverly. And I have to say that I'm so incredibly uh, grateful for that. <laughs>On Friday, and this is with this, I'll conclude. Um, I was summoned, if you like, by my sister to go up to Scotland to see my mother. She's in a care home, and her her life she's ninety. She was ninety two, and on uh, uh, my brother, my sister, and myself, and uh, my brother brother's daughter were round her bed. Her breathing was becoming more shallow and uh, it was getting close to the point where she was about to pass away. And my um, 
pastor had sent me a message saying, how's your mum doing? And I was trying to reply to say that her breathing's getting a bit shallower and stuff like that. And my sister suddenly just leaned over to my mother, who couldn't talk, couldn't respond, but was still breathing. And she said, mum, now is the time to say yes to Jesus. At which point she stopped breathing and stepped into the presence of the Lord. So my question for everybody listening tonight is, do you know Jesus? And my conviction, if you're listening and you're hearing me speak and you, have, and you don't know him personally, it's my belief that now is the time to say yes to Jesus. He loves you. He died on the cross to pay the price for your sins. You can know peace and complete release from all guilt and shame because Jesus died on the cross. And when he rose again from the dead, he's alive now. And he's standing, knocking on the door of your heart by his Holy Spirit. And my question is, will you say yes to Jesus now? I believe that you can step into a relationship with God and a fulfillment of his plan and destiny for your life at this very moment. And if you'd like to do it, I would encourage you to pray this prayer with me and say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me to pay the price for my sins. Thank you that you are alive. And I ask you now to please forgive me for my sins and to come into my heart by your spirit and make me a brand new person. I Receive you now as my Lord and Saviour and ask you for the help of your Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me. Here's my life, Lord. Take control in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, Thanks, Chris. Wow, that was wonderful what you shared tonight. Not been easy for you, quite emotional at times what you shared, but it was, thank you for being so honest and open with us tonight. If you prayed that prayer with Chris tonight, please let us know. Phone us on the hotline, plus 44-794-355-0287. Or go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. There you'll find the Salvation Prayer link. You can click on that. You can find out how you can get to know God and all sorts of information. You go to our website, but please let us know if you pray that prayer tonight. Chris did say that uh, Jesus does heal. He does believe in healing. You see many people healed and we believe in healing too. Mm -hmm. If you need a touch in your body, then right now I'm going to pray for you that Jesus might touch you and heal you from whatever you're going through right now. Amen. Father, I thank you, Lord, that your word is true. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you said, you, I am the Lord who heals you. And Lord, we believe indeed that you do heal today. Yes. And there are people listening who need a touch from you in their bodies, in their mind, in their soul, Lord, in different areas they need a touch from you. Lord Jesus, I, take, I pray right now for people watching and listening, that you might minister to them by your power of the Holy Spirit, that, Lord, they will know that healing touch from you. For you said, I, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You've not changed, Lord. You still have the same power you did when you walked on earth, Lord. When you heal people, you, you heal, you, you open the eyes of the blind, open the ears of the deaf, you cause the lame to walk, Lord. Even now, Lord, I pray that you will touch people. Lord, that people will be set free from whatever problem they're suffering from right now. They may know that healing power of God. Touch them right now and set them free, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Amen.
Amen. Oh, oh, Amen. Thank you. George, I'm going to hand over you to you now. I believe you got some questions for Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Chris, for your story. Fantastic. Mm. I mean, some dangerous, some heartwarming mm. uh, moments in there that uh, touched a lot of people. Now, forgive the pun. It was a great story, but it wasn't all plain sailing, was it? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> you still sail today? Well, yes, I do, but only uh, occasionally, to be honest with you. But uh, the interesting thing is, you know, I on my bio, it says that I was working for a Jaguar Land Rover, which, uh, you know, I was for five years, uh, for five years. But uh, I've been approached to work for the International Laser Class Association, which is a, a governing body of the racing side of uh, sail, of the laser racing, you know, which is used in the Olympics. And uh, so they've asked me to be their technical officer. So I started today. Today is my first day. Is that, the good, is that the good news? Yeah, that's the good news. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. So your dad, uh, he took you out, of course. That was a dangerous moment. You, you told us about the time you went sailing in Aberdeen with your dad. Yes. Yeah. You may not have been here to tell your story. Yes, I know it was. It didn't. I didn't have any fear, though. It's just interesting. Yeah, I, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and with all the sailing and the competing that you did in your life, uh, did you actually ever win anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I won a few championships. I mean, I, I won the qualification series for the World Championships, which was a series of races. Mm -hmm. That, uh, and like I think it was, I can't remember what how many of those people got to go to the worlds to represent the country, you know. But I won that. And I won some other local ones, but I never won uh, a national or a European or a world. I didn't win any of those. Mm -hmm. And from all the sailing that you've done and the endurance that you've gone through, what have you learned from us, if anything? That God is faithful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I didn't say this, but uh, before when I got married, there was a, a chap prophesied over me. And he said something along the lines of, that as, as God was the God of all, the great I am and the God of all Testament times mm -hmm. in the giving of a promise, he was well able to bring about a fulfillment of that promise. And, and what I found is that, you know, when you walk with Jesus, he'll speak to you and he'll give you promises from scripture and he'll begin to reveal things to you. And sometimes they happen quickly but other times they happen over a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. And but as we um, remain faithful to God's word and his promise, he remains faithful to us and he stands over his word to perform it in our experience. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. He said, of course, growing up, it wasn't it wasn't uh, as easy growing up because as a kid, just you had uh, a lot of things going on with you. How did that make you feel? There was lots of labels put on you and things like that. How did that make you feel? He's coming. Jesus is coming. I can't wait to hear the trumpet call. He's coming. Jesus is coming. And when he comes, we'll crown him Lord of all. Life Stories